Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan and thank you for joining us for our Tuesday update for June the 6th. We've got low pressure which is going to park itself near the upper North Island this week. In the South Island, high pressure and Australia sees that same high pressure zone departing and windy westerlies moving in. So we'll start with New Zealand. Low pressure up here, likely to be stuck there for the rest of the week. It's nothing major, it's more annoying, I guess, for a lot of people. It will drive in the southeasterly wind. That's cooler and cloudier for those of you along the eastern side. And then most of the rain, that's around East Cape and Gisborne. We'll show you a rain map in a moment. Further down the country, high pressure. And for the first week this year, we're forecasting frosts around the uh, South Island. So we've got widespread frost coming up this week. And then over to Australia, as the high departs, warm and northerlies for you, and then that changes to windy westerlies due to a lot of low pressure down there in the Southern Ocean. But let's kick off with the rainfall for New Zealand for the next three days ahead. Most of it, as you can see, is offshore up here. That's where low pressure is, that's where most of the rain will be. Over land, heaviest falls or the most amount of rain looks to be around Gisborne up towards East Cape. Nothing major, around about 50 millimetres or so, maybe a little more further higher up in the hills. And then as you go up into Coromandel Peninsula, Great Barrier Island and the eastern side of Northland, not a lot, 20 or maybe 30 millimetres at the most. That's just from showers. Most parts of the country this week are actually leaning drier than average. And as you can see, a big chunk of the South Island and the western side of the North Island dry. Now let's have a look at Australia for also the next three days ahead. Rain heaviest down around Victoria. You're getting up to around about 60 or 70 millimetres or so for you there. Mostly dry though elsewhere and just a few showers around Cairns. And we've got for the first time this week frosts in the forecast for New Zealand. Widespread across the South Island's interior. It's not quite so widespread in coastal areas. And we've got a marine heat wave at the moment which is also uh, adding a little bit more warmth to the overnight temperatures in those coastal zones. But here, here's an example from Gore, and you can see coming up every night this week, there is a risk of frosts, minus three, we haven't been seeing that showing up this year. So finally some cold weather, you can see the frost forecaster for free at ruralweather.co.nz. So let's move along. So not a lot of change for New Zealand this week. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Uh, the computer modeling has shown um, perhaps a little bit less rain coming this week than we were talking about last week, but there is still this wet weather, and this shows you the setup really for the week ahead. And then you see this big storm in the Southern Ocean blowing up a, a colder southwester for Perth and Fremantle, and over the next week or so, that's gonna track closer and closer towards the South Island. But for now, the South Island covered or smothered in high pressure, which means sunny days, cold nights, and frosts in the morning. For the North Island, not so frosty. Cloudy weather on the east, cloudiest in the northeast. But those of you further to the west, Taranaki for example, more likely to be sunny and dry with this setup uh, carrying on. Also, a cold front moving through here into Sydney later into Thursday might produce a few thunderstorms. By Friday, Windy westerlies are dominating the southern coastline of Australia, and that is sort of a typical setup for this time of the year, and it's pushing its way towards New Zealand, but the high over the South Island keeps it frosty and cold, and the low up here to the north getting bigger, got two centres to it, still driving in the same setup. Mostly dry for the North Island, but those closest to the eastern coastline more likely to have that cooler southeasterly breeze, more likely to have cloud, and if you're right along that eastern coastline, you're more likely to have the rain or showers. And as we go into the weekend, finally, this starts to fall apart. The low to the north finally weakens and starts to move away, but at the same time, the high does the same thing. So Saturday is sort of the last gasp of the setup, if you like, and then we go in towards Sunday, and it's finally cleared up. Light winds across the country and still kind of cooler as well. Not as warm as it was with those northerly winds we had over April and May. Now we're not getting them as much and this is a southerly flow coming back in again. So by the time we get to Sunday, there's another cooler change. The same one that is arriving in Perth over the next day or so finally reaches the lower South Island and it's cooler with you know, um, beautiful afternoons, but colder nights for the eastern side of Australia by the time we get to the end of the weekend. And that is all from me on this short week, at least for us here in New Zealand. I will catch you again tomorrow, Wednesday, with our next update. We'll see you then.